So this is uh, our gyroplane. This is the one with the AR1C with a with the canopy on. So how do you operate one of these? Basically, let's say that this is locked, and you can hear that lock very very clearly. You're going to take your hand, and you're just going to move it down, and that opens uh, the lock. And you go up like that, and basically to get in, stick all the way to the right, left foot right here, and then you can take your hands and balance yourself right in the middle of the seat, get up there, no problem standing on the floor, uh, and essentially this is how I sit down. Seat belts, you know, could be put on if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that right now, but here it is, and so the cockpit is arranged, so everything is kinda in front of you, there's only one thing that's not in front of you and that's your comm jack. So comm jack for the 915 is right here. Whereas the comm jack for the 912 and the 914 is underneath the seat. And we kept the comm jack away from here because we didn't want a wire kind of going from your headset into, into, the, you know, into the instrument panel. Startup procedure would be uh, master on, okay, uh, lane A, lane B on, in this case, I, I'm not going to actually do a startup, but fuel pump 1 on, EFIS on, which will turn on your EMS, the engine monitoring system, and you, of course you need that because as soon as you start up, you want to make sure there's oil pressure. If you didn't do that, you would not have oil pressure. You can shut the LC, you know, this is the iFly GPS, we do that as a standard option, but I'm just gonna turn it off because we don't need it right now. I'm gonna take the avionics, which is transponder, uh, intercom and radio, as well as ADSB. That's all on the avionics uh, submaster, and we're gonna keep that off. Lane A and lane B are turned on, but they're not getting any power right now, that's why all these access. So as soon, now I'm not gonna do it, but as soon as I put power on this way, you will hear the end, fuel pump one will start, start to go, and you will see these things, axes disappear, so. And I let the fuel pressure build up till it says 30 or 32. Before I would, while holding this, I would push this button to start up. Of course, I'm not gonna do it here. People always ask me, like, you get this thing going before taking off. That, we call that pre-rotation. So gyroplanes, most of the modern gyroplanes have pretty powerful pre-rotators. Uh, in the olden days, you used to be able to get 100, and that was lucky, uh, 100, 120. Um, maybe some of the, then they started developing better. And now pretty much everybody has a pre-rotator that can get to 150 to 250, almost 300 even. So. Uh, the pre-rotator is done, in our case, by keeping the stick forward and if you notice this bicycle handle right here. So if, you, if I squeeze this bicycle handle, you'll see at the back, there is an arm that gets depressed and that tightens the belt and it actually starts to pre-rotate right here. So while pre-rotating, I am going to take my left hand and the brake is right here and I'm going to, I call this the taco. I will taco my hand and hold the brake, and I'm gonna control the engine RPM by moving my taco front and back. So I'm holding the brake the whole time. It takes a minute for pre-rotation. So I will squeeze this, and then I'm slowly increasing engine RPM, watching the rotor RPM that is right next to engine RPM right here. See engine RPM, rotor RPM. As the rotor RPM stops increasing, I'm gonna increase the engine power just a tad, like 200 engine RPM at a time. Let the rotor RPM catch up, get the torque transfer happen. Once it stops increasing, I'm gonna go more a little bit, 200 RPM at a time, a little more, a little more, till I see the rotor RPM come up to 180 to 220. And at that point, I will let go of the pre-rotator, pull the stick back, let go of the brake, and then I'm just using the throttle to advance the throttle and move forward. The V speeds for takeoff, you will break ground at about 37 to 40 knots, depending on if you're doing a soft field technique or a normal technique. So 36 to 37 knots, a soft field technique, you can break ground. Um, then you get in ground effect, build the speed up generally around 50, uh, 50 knots if you're doing VX, uh, 48 knots, 
You can climb at 48 knots for VX, which is your best angle of climb if you're trying to clear a 50 foot obstacle. Or you go to 53, 54 knots. I usually use 55 because it's easier. And that's my VY, basically best, best rate of climb speed. So those are the speeds we'll climb at. In the pattern, you could be operating anywhere between 50 to 65 knots. That's generally the pattern speed. My final approach is usually around 55 to 60 knots. Um, and uh, the glide ratio in the gyroplane is a great 3 to 1, 3.5 to 1 maximum. It's not a lot, it's a rotorcraft. But it can also land on a postage stamp, so. Price points and different model and configurations. So we start at the base model, which is basically your basic open cockpit, like semi-enclosed cockpit like this, windshields, motorcycle of the sky type of deal, uh, AR1 with 912 ULS engine and basic day VFR instruments. Uh, a whole kit, including the engine, including everything that you will need to finish it, you can get in about I would say about $65,000. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com, The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. Okay, if you want to build it yourself. The builder assist will add about five to six thousand dollars to that. Um, that because you're going to if you want us to test fly it, we can do it for you for an additional fee. Um, but basically, that's where the kit starts, a full kit, you know, something that gives you everything that you can go from starting to finishing it. And that's with a painted body. If you wanted to paint yourself, it's uh, about $4,000 off. Um, if uh, people were going to do their own builder assist and they want us to ship the kit, which is not what most people do, they take the builder assist and come here and do it with us. Um, they can do that, it's possible to do it. We have exploded view diagrams for every sub-assembly and we are available uh, with email support for anybody with pictures and stuff, we can guide them through it. Um, that includes the wiring, basic wiring harness and basic instruments as well. If you wanted to do all your instrumentation, you wanted to have your own engine, you wanted to do all of that yourself, painting and everything, you can get a kit at about $48,000, $49,000. then. You have to buy the engine, propeller, you know, all that stuff you want to do uh, if you want to do it on your own. Some people have used engines. If they, they have that, they, they're welcome to bring that engine. We don't uh, stop them from doing that. Even with builder says if they want to come here and ship their own engine, we are okay with that. People can find all this information uh, and contact us via our website, www.silverlightaviation.com. That's uh, Silverlight, S-I-L-V-E-R-L-I-G-H-T, uh, aviation.com. And uh, yeah, they, there's a contact us form. They can uh, ask us for quotes specifically, uh, ask us uh, if they want to hear about training and stuff. We do hook them up with different instructors for training. So, but yeah, all, all that stuff is there. And if you really want to have an engineering lesson on how exactly a rotor creates lift and the symmetry of lift, Check the link above or the description below for that video.